What's All up? Right. All right. Thanks, everyone, for uh, joining us today. Um, this is our uh, Monday Zoom conference following the uh, WW Ranch National out in uh, Florida. Um, on the call today, uh, on the Zoom today, we got um, three 450 guys. Unfortunately, uh, Carson Mumford had a uh, last minute thing pop up. Uh, he won't be able to join us. Um, but we have um, three 450 riders here, uh, all Suzuki guys. Uh, the, we have uh, Max Anstey uh, for the Hep Motorsports team. Uh, we have Frederick Norin uh, from JGRMX. And then Isaac Tizo also gets uh, support from JGRMX as well. Um, all three of these guys had uh, pretty solid days. Um, at uh at ww ranch um particularly freddie and uh, isaac both uh, earning their best results of the season a career best for isaac um in his effort uh max we'll start with you um you had a great day especially in that second moto um you know i know the first moto didn't go the way you wanted but to come back from 40th to get up to the 13th you know it was a big rebound for you it was a good ride all in all even though the result wasn't where you wanted to be <laughs> Um, and then you did exactly what you wanted to do in second moto with a good start and stayed up there with those front guys. Uh, go through your day and talk about what it felt like to get back up in the front, get back in the mix, and get another great result under your belt. Yeah, so, um, no, it was nice. I think uh, first moto, I was just, I was coming over the, uh, the first, um, literally the first tabletop as you went through the rollers. And um, I, I think, I think for me, not knowing a lot of these tracks and having to learn pretty fast the the biggest thing has been like making sure i'm online or, or even just doing things in the right I, I went over that tabletop thought i was scrubbing it down the inside and um i literally just landed off the track so ended up landing off the track and um i ended up hitting a sponsor banner thing and um as the other suzuki boys will know once the bike stops, it's a bit of a pain to start. So, um, yeah, it took me like a minute to uh, to start my bike back up. Um, and by the time I got going, I was quite a fair ways back. So, um, yeah, that was just the way that it went in the first race. It's, you know, we're all pushing on that on that first lap. Um, but, yeah, I came back from, from a fair ways back. Um, but I used a, a bit of energy, you know. That first race was... Um, was tough because I wanted to obviously climb up as high as I could, but in in another way, I kind of knew that it was going to be hot. It would have been easier if I'd have just done like I did in the second moto, which was get out, ride out in front with the guys, getting a good pace. And and the second moto was actually easier for me, you know, riding around in fourth or okay, I passed Sexton at one point. Um, but it was actually easier than the first moto because you're constantly pushing. At least the second moto, I was could stick to my lines and. Uh, and do my thing but no it was uh it was good i i think you know this season as a whole has been been pretty solid for for my my team and my guys you know it, it is new for me and it's new for the team you know we don't have settings so as far as testing goes you know the tracks in southern california and i've figured pretty quickly and not the best so i've been um yeah, trying to figure things out at the weekends and, and try and make improvements. But yeah, we're in the race. It's, uh, it's good. Each week we're getting better and, and I'm happy with the progress that we're making. Awesome. Uh, Freddie, uh, you finished right behind, um, right behind uh, Max here. Uh, I, I know it hasn't been the season you were probably wanting. Um, you know, you're used to being in the top 10. You're used to being in the hunt, in the thick of it. Um, but you got that result that you've been looking for all year. You got a 9-8 for eighth overall, your first solid top 10 finish of the year. You've been hovering around there all day. You've had great starts a lot of times this season, um, and maybe things just didn't work out one way or another in the moto um, for one reason or another. Um, talk about what it felt like to finally get up there, finally get those two moto results that you've been looking for all year and get that top 10, because I'm sure it's something you can build on for the last couple of rounds. Yeah, for sure. Obviously, um the season up up to this point has been kind of rocky. Uh, I kind of expected this result at the first round and get it at round seven uh, out of nine. It's kind of like, oh, shoot. But, yeah, like you said, this is something to build off of. Um, I've had good starts. The starts are good. Uh, we're, we're doing some good testing, too. I had some good test days before WW that really uh, made me more comfortable on the bike as well. So we're, we're making progress on, on, on all ends, really. My, my speed has been good, too. Just trying to 
to get that consistency has been been hard for me and then I've had some kind of weird issues as well um but yeah hopefully from now on we can kind of build on a 9a and I can go from there um I expect myself to be you know at least top 10 and I wanted to have some top fives and, and have a podium. That was kind of my main goal. So there's two more rounds, four more motors to go. So uh, there's still some time to do, uh, make some stuff happen. So I'm looking forward to that. Awesome. And then Isaac, moving over to you. Um, you're just two races back into it, um, you know, coming off uh, an injury. You're, you're really trying to get your sea legs back under you, if you will. You're trying to get back into race shape. Um, I'm sure it was a little bit of a surprise for you to be up there and and to come away, you know, ride so well on just your second race back, a 12-14, 12th overall, um, your career best finish. You know, I know you get some help from the JGR guys. That does a lot of the, I'm sure, a lot of the work for you to help you, you know, getting prepped for race days. But talk about, you know, already being up there, being a threat for the top 10, just your second start of the 2020 season. Yeah, that was uh, that was pretty exciting for me. And it's kind of um, unexpected in a sense, like, because uh, I've never done it more so I guess um but yeah this season I got hurt in Supercross I tore my MCL and so I was off for a while and like I guess I've been on the bike for like about a month and a half to two months but I've been riding just uh just a stock bike and uh putting in time with Freddie actually a lot we've been we've been uh having some good some good uh training together but um I just actually last weekend was the first time I got on the on the race bike and man it is it's good, but it's a little different than the, than the bike I was riding. So it was, uh, took a little bit to get used to. I was able to do some testing, um, last week with Freddie, actually we're running a similar setup. So I just had a, I'm just relying on Freddie cause he's got a lot of experience. And so I'm trying to soak it all in, but yeah, the weekend went, I was very happy with it. I didn't have any expectations. I was just, um, going out there doing the best I could and then, uh, just growing each weekend. So. Um, for, for my second race back, I was definitely excited about it with it being hot on the sand track. I've, I have never raced there before. And, um, I was very, I was very excited. So hopefully the last two rounds will be good and we'll keep, keep improving. Awesome. Uh, welcome up to the media here, guys. Use the, uh, raise your hand feature if you can, just make it easier on us. Uh, Cooksy, we'll let you go with you first. Chris Cooksy with two, four speed. Uh, Max, so I saw a lot of uh, rumblings about a protest afterward. What was that all about? Oh, <laughs> yeah, they liked my line, didn't they? Um, uh, around the split section. <laughs> no, uh, I don't know. I, some Something, when I came in, they were all saying that Honda or whoever it was, I actually don't even know who it was, um, were saying that what I was doing, they were trying to protest me and get me disqualified for that, for that line. And then Davey Coombs came over and um, Jeff, the guy who does the riders meeting, don't know his last name. Um, he, uh, came over and said, yeah, it was all fine. You can, you know, there's no banners there. I didn't even think about it. I was like, there's no, there's no markers there. And, and in Millville, everyone went down the hill inside, inside across that split section. Anyway, I just figured that more guys would catch on to it. Cause I was just making my life a little bit easier. <laughs> yeah, it was a brilliant line. And it looks like you're really kind of finding your form here as the season wraps up, are you signed for next year? Are you staying for Supercross? What's going on? Um, yeah, I like, I, I'm, I, like I've said before, I didn't move all the way around the world to, uh, to just go back home. I'm, uh, I'm working on things. We're, we're getting there. I, I like my team. I honestly do believe that the HEP guys, um, we've got potential to, to grow. And, you know, at the moment coming into this season, I was coming off an injury. I mean, I'm still dealing with it. The team hadn't raced outdoors. You know, we're not we're not getting support from the JGR lot. It is literally just me, my crew chief, and my mechanic, um, who who are putting pulling things together. And um, okay, yeah, it's different and and it's new. But we're in the race. I didn't know what to expect coming in, but for sure, there's potential to grow. So yeah, I, I would love to. Um, to, to stay and be here for Supercross. Of course, I'm not going to underestimate anything in Supercross. I, I've raced outdoors for the last however many years. I, I know Supercross is going to be really tough as well. But um, I do believe with a good 12 weeks of training and, um, and work, you know, we'll, we'll see what happens. But yeah, I, 
I want to stay. I didn't come all the way out here to, uh, to end up just going back, back home. So um, I'm working on things. Then uh, real quick, oh, I'm going to steal this from, I just listened to Weege's review podcast and it was a good question. If you get on the podium, are you going to take a, a drink of twisted tea on the podium because it's alcoholic? Yeah, I don't mind. <laughs> yes, that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> I'd drink the champagne. If they gave me champagne, I'd drink the champagne as well. I'd drink Twisted Tea and the champagne. Doesn't matter. <laughs> nice. <laughs> uh, Kellen, go ahead. Uh, yeah, Kellen Brower with Racer X. Uh, this is to Max as well. In the MXGP series over the years, you're quite comfortable when it came to sand races, and WW Ranch is kind of the closest thing we'll get to sand on this year's schedule. But kind of how different is the sand to WW versus what you're more used to and how comfortable did you feel on the track? Um, I think it's like, like most of the, I listen to Grant Langston and, and the guys talk about when they go to Southwick and they say, ah, this is not sand. Yeah. WW like that was, yeah, that's not, that's not, that's not really sand. It's sandier. It's, it, but the conditions, you know, I ran the same bike set up suspension wise in uh, Millville. So I, I feel like a lot of the, the tracks, um, I feel like a lot of the tracks here in America, the way that they prepare them, they get big braking bumps, um, but they kind of all end up the same kind of thing. Like the, the suspension, it's not, I, I feel like the biggest change in Europe is you can go from Italy or Czech Republic or somewhere where it's rock hard and slippery, where you need the bike to be soft and smooth and getting traction to then go to Lommel, which obviously is completely different. I, I feel like here, majority of the tracks have been um, similar setup. Obviously, I know going into this weekend coming up, uh, Colorado, that's different. There's obviously some things we need to do with the mapping and, and the bike and all that to get it even just running. And it's the more hard pack, uh, hard pack ground. But majority of the way that they prep these American tracks, they all end up being pretty similar. Big braking bumps, big ruts you can turn off of. You've got traction everywhere you go. Um, so yeah, it, it wasn't a massive change in bike setup for me to go to a sand race. Cause if it was, then I would have yeah made a few more changes. But uh, talking about prep over the years, we've seen guys like Stribos and DeSaul and Simpson come over here and say how much they enjoy the track prep compared to what happens in GPs. D do you like it or would you prefer it to be kind of more different the way it is over in Europe? No, I like it. I think, um, I, you know, that's why, that's why I came here. You know, I, I had the opportunity um, and I've been saying for a long time to the people closest to me that, you know, I'd like to go and give it a go back in America. And, and that is something that I was brought up with as, you know, I was over here when I was 14, 15, 16. So I, I kind of, I did the whole amateur thing and the style of tracks with the jumps and the ruts and things is that's the kind of, um, yeah, kind of thing that I that I like and I do well on. So, um, yeah, no, I I like this. I like the racing over here, and I think I think it's been great. I think it's been great that we've just been able to have a championship so far, and it's all gone. It's gone well. All the tracks have been good. It's been a lot of tracks for me that, okay, technically I have been there like to a lot of these ones ten years ago when I was on a two fifty, um, when I was sixteen, but it's still different. Like Millville, that was such a cool track, you know, to go back to, I never went up that big hill. Like, uh, yeah, like we did, you know, I, I didn't do that 10 years ago. So just a lot of the places are, are very nice and cool, awesome tracks to go to. And, um, just nice that we're, we're even able to go racing. Awesome. Thank you. Uh, we go ahead. Yeah. Thanks. Good question and answer there. Cooksy and, uh, and, and Max, that was good stuff. Uh, I'm going to ask uh, Isaac, I got a question for you. Um, what is so different about, um, you're saying the stock bike and the race bike, what feels different? What's most noticeable? Um, it's definitely a lot tighter. And I've been trying to, trying to figure that out, trying to understand wh why it feels just so much different. It's, it's better, but it just is obviously, I think my practice bike or the stock bike I was riding on, it just had a lot of hours on it. And so it's like really loose. And so when I got on a new bike, that thing, the engine obviously is, is a rocket ship. Like uh, on the starts, man, it's like, I'd come out. I didn't think my jumps were that good, but then I would just pull down the start straight. So the power is amazing, but overall everything just seems tighter. And uh, just obviously just 
it's perfect. It's uh, everything's new. So grease stuff, it's just it's just dialed in. It's not, it's kind of hard to explain because I honestly don't know. I've never ridden a, a bike like that. So um, I've been learning. I've ridden it. I think this is my I've ridden it four times now. So I love it. I gotta keep going. During the week, do you get uh, on a race style bike now, or do you go back to practicing on a stocker then? during the week oh yeah that so that's what that was the biggest thing this week the biggest change for me from millville to ww was um i was able to ride the it's the race bike everything was the same and so i really got to just kind of figure out how i reacted so that was the biggest thing for me coming into ww for sure we get this a lot uh for privateer guys like you and then you get on a factory type bike um how much testing experience and knowledge do you have um, I have very little, <laughs> actually just the time I've been on JGR really, um, I've dealt with some suspension people before and I've started to learn kind of what change, what affects what, whenever you change certain settings or you go in on clickers, um, I can feel a lot, but it's hard for me to, to decide which way to go. Um, so I've been obviously like the factory team and being around all those guys, you kind of just tell them what the bike's doing and then, then it's their their job to help dial it in for you but i've also um helped got a lot of help from like freddie and alex those have been uh i've learned a lot from those too so yeah uh so you get a chance here you're under the tent and you got their factory bike and all that um do you feel pressure uh now that you've gotten an opportunity and you know as a privateer there's a million reasons why at the end of the day it might not go your way but now you've got the good stuff so <laughs> does that add pressure um i think for sure it does. And it's hard not to let that affect you because you have the equipment necessary to, to get good results. Um, so I think I, that probably affected me in Millville, even though I didn't really necessarily feel um, the pressure. I felt the most relaxed I've had just because of the preparation that I've, I've, uh, I've had this year. I just feel like I put in a lot more work and I'm um, a lot more prepared, but yeah, there's like I was saying before, like you have, the equipment you have the people around you the knowledge and then there's people that are proving that the bike is good so why why can't i do that so i guess if you really if you would think about it then yes you do but i try to just focus on executing what i can and then and just learning and growing each weekend cool all right thanks um hey freddie yeah you said the first couple rounds weren't going the way you wanted you're finally there now what's the difference uh, difference, uh, we've done some more bike testing for sure. That's, uh, helped me, uh, get more comfortable and also just, just riding in general, uh, for me has been good. Like, uh, like all the other guys here on the call as well. I, I was coming off a bad injury from earlier this year with my ankles. So coming back from that and actually getting a lot more seat time has helped me. Um, and then I think just, just the racing in general, just getting into that race mode and getting uh, more rounds under the belt, you start getting more comfortable. Um, so I guess it's something I, I should try to work on in the future years um, to get into that quicker. Uh, and uh not be hurt <laughs> to have a, a solid uh, entry to it but yeah just getting more ride time and, and testing with the guys um i would for sure help so um the 450 class seems really deep this year you've kind of been in that five to ten position for a long time now a lot of different years different bikes and all that does it seem harder to get those same results this year or is it actually just tough every year um it's, I mean, it's, it's always tough. I mean, all those guys are really fast and, uh, and outside of top 10 too, you have a lot of fast guys. So it's always tough, but, uh, it's, I mean, looking at the lineup for this year, it's been, it's been a lot of really, or there's a lot of really fast guys and, and there still is a lot of fast guys, even though we have some guys that are out with injury. So, um, yeah, I would say it's it's harder this year. It's probably the harder, like the fastest year um, since I've been in America. It feels like at least. Um, so, um, yeah, yeah, it's definitely a little bit harder. All right, that's it for me. Thanks, guys. Cool, uh, Alex, go ahead. 
Yeah, Alex Gobert, MotoOnline.com. This one's for Freddie. You, you and Joey were pretty close on the weekend in terms of results. So is it important for you to try and be the, the lead guy of the JGR? And, and do you gauge much from him? Because, yeah, he's obviously a pretty high-profile rider. Yeah, I mean, uh, for sure. I mean, I want to be the best I can be every race, whether that's, um, you know, it doesn't matter who it is in front of me or behind me. I want to be, I want to beat him. So uh, we happened to be under the same tent <laughs> and we were eight, nine overall. So, uh, yeah, I mean, yeah, of course I want to, it doesn't matter who it is, but, um, and then, yeah, it's uh, he's a very experienced guy. He's raced uh, for uh, for a long time and had some really good results. So it's it's always you know um, a little confidence booster beating guys that have um, a lot of uh, great results under the belt. To put it that way. And then you've got Max out there as well, also on the Suzuki. So do you think it helps? Um, not necessarily in terms of development, but to have a few good guys on the RMZ, is that, a, is that of benefit just to see what the bike's capable of between the three of you guys, especially? Uh, yeah, yeah, I would say so. Uh, I mean, you can, you know, trying to watch the races afterwards and stuff and like watching NC's Max's bike, uh, comparing it to mine or, trying to watch Joey's bike or Isaac's bike and or riding techniques because knowing that there are on similar bikes or at least the same brand. Um, and then, I mean, it's, uh, it's pretty cool to see three Suzuki's in the top 10 from the previous weekend too. So, um, yeah, I think it's good for the brand too, um, that we, we, uh, we've had some good results on it. And over to Max, uh, you obviously came from the, the KTM in GP, so that's one of the recognised as obviously the more modern platform. So would you sort of share with us any pluses or, or minuses between the brands? And obviously you're not going to say it too much, but at the same time, what, what are the differences you kind of feel at your level? Well, probably the electric start. Um, that was... Uh, that was probably the first um, biggest difference. Um, but as far as bikes go, I've ridden, I've ridden a lot of different bikes, a lot of different brands. I've ridden for a lot of different teams. You know, there's all the bikes are good. It's, it's who you've got setting them up, how you set them up. It's like suspension. You know, people, people say, I, I run Olin suspension. Not many guys... I don't think anyone else runs Olin suspension so or any other team. So it's, um, you know, from the outside, it's easy to look in and go, oh, that bike's not very good or this bike's not very good. But if we go and start winning races, everyone loves it. You know, it's, it's, it's the way you set it up and who you've got setting it up. I think it's the group of people um, that you've got around you. Um, and I personally believe, yeah, there, there's tracks where the KTM from last year, it, it, it doesn't even work here in America. It's different. It's a different different thing. The bike setup wouldn't work. Yeah, so it's it's one of those where I've got a bit of experience with some different teams and different bikes, and, and I know that all the bikes and brands are good. Um, it's just taking – it takes time. It, it, it doesn't just happen like one year, even one season is not – is not enough. Yeah, we're making improvements now, but we're a hell of a lot different from where we were even at Loretta's. So it's give it until, yeah, this time next year in the outdoors. And, and then I think we'll be, you know, doing solid work every weekend. But the inconsistencies come just by going slightly the wrong way with this or slightly the wrong way with that. But that comes as a team as a whole. And, um, yeah, that that's the the biggest thing. It's it's the group of people that you've got working with you and um and taking the time to feel happy with what you've got underneath you. Thanks. And just for Isaac, uh, from Supercross to the outdoors, you obviously didn't race the first portion of the pro motocross season. So 
did you have another injury or was there anything specific that sort of kept you out of those opening rounds? Um, not necessarily. It was just like um, uh, some, just little things we had to deal with the team, just sponsor stuff like that. And me uh, also just healing up and getting back into up to speed, really. But a lot of it was just um, just uh, sponsor things, just, you know, the money side of everything, so like getting to the rounds for me. So, yeah, I was – I was ready to go at the beginning of the season, I thought, but as the I was actually kind of glad I skipped the first couple of rounds just to just get more comfortable on the bike and to build my speed and my fitness. As I found out in this last two rounds, um, race fitness is definitely a lot different than back home at the track because you can do 35 minutes and back home and you feel feel good, like, oh, I can do another one, or you feel like you pushed hard, but in here, like, um, at Mill- Millville, especially, man, I was like, had arm pump for two days after the race and I was tired like 10 minutes in, but so like la- this what past weekend, I was, I felt strong about 20 minutes. So I feel like it's only going to keep getting better, but yeah, just, um, missing the first couple of rounds are just, just, um, some team reasons. Yeah. Yep. No worries at all. Well, thanks a lot. Well done. Thank you. Uh, Cooksey, go ahead. Uh, I'm going to expand on that. Isaac, you said uh, team reasons, and I was kind of curious, does that have to do, because you, by the way, great ride yesterday. You did really good. But I was curious, like, how did that come about? Is it a title sponsor? Is that where it came from, or what was the deal? Um, just, uh, I don't know how much I can really speak on it, but. Um, don't get yourself in trouble. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's the thing is, yeah, um, we just. Uh, <laughs> Things weren't really moving along quite as we expected. And so, but they've, the whole team has been really amazing to me, like um, supplying a bike for me to, to continue riding on. And so, but things have progressed a lot. And so, and looking very promising. So Jeremy was uh, gracious enough to let me race the last few rounds um, because I've been putting in a lot of work and he's seen that. And um, he felt like I could, I could grow and learn from these last four rounds. So yeah, it was, it's definitely, I got to give a lot of credit, and, and I'm very thankful to Jeremy for the opportunity. Well, don't get yourself in trouble, but can we can we expect you in 2021 on the JGR? Um, nothing's set yet, but I would definitely love to be. <laughs> okay. Thanks, man. Well, uh, Kellen, go ahead. Uh, yeah, just a quick question for Freddie. Uh, at the beginning of the year, it was a bit up and down with the results for you. And uh, pretty much at the halfway point, it seems like these last two weeks, you've, you've had more consistent results. Was that like a, a goal you had set for yourself just to maybe try to get those two motos in consistently? Or is it just the luck of the draw and the way things have gone for you? Um, no, I mean, it's always a goal to be consistent. And um, previous years, I've, I am a really consistent rider. So it's actually kind of been a little bit of a weird season for me as well like mentally like understanding why I'm haven't been able to put uh all the motos together um obviously like I've had some weird issues um and stuff like that but like the the motos where it's been fully my control uh so no I wouldn't say it's the luck of a draw um because I, like I said, I, I am a consistent rider. It's, um, I don't know. I guess I'm, yeah. I don't know. <laughs> All right. Thank you. All right. Anybody else? All right. Cool. Well, thank you guys. Thanks all the riders. Thanks media for uh, joining today.